In this video, we're going to talk about exponential functions. So really, sort of a graphic representation, not graphic like there's violence, but um, there's a graph in it, uh, representations of exponents, or something that increases or decreases with an exponential relationship. So this sort of thing. A would be sort of where you start times uh, B would be how much it changes and to the number of times it actually happens. So let's look at what that sort of looks like uh, graphically. The original is y equals a times bx, or b to the x power, sorry. So in this case, um, here's a couple. I'm going to raise it up a little bit just so you can see it. In the first case, we end up with y is equal to 2 to the x. So the number that would be in front here would be 1. So a in this case would be 1 times 2 to the x power. As you can see, it starts off a little slow, and it's really, when it's negative, it's really getting smaller, and the reason is just because uh, 2 to the negative 1 power is a fraction, it would be 1 half, and then it would keep getting closer and closer and closer to 0, but it never quite reaches there, and then it just shoots up very quickly. Like this would go almost straight up from here, uh, not quite, but so if you do 2 to the third power, it's 8, so it would go up a lot once you got up to the 3, and then it would go, it would shoot up really quickly, but it starts slow. On the opposite side of that, the way that you get that little green line is just to make the whole thing negative. So if I'm raising 2 to the x and it's negative, it ends up going down. Uh, similarly, if I wanted it to sort of uh, converge or move down towards the x-axis, I would uh, do it as a fraction. So if I'm doing 1 half to the x power, as I get bigger and bigger with my exponents on 1 half, the size of the fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller in real number sense. And whereas if I do to the negative, like 1 half to the negative 2 is actually uh, 2 times 2, which is 4, so it's getting bigger. So it's just basically the mirror image of the ones that I had up here. And once again, if you want it to be on the bottom, you raise it to the negative. Uh, how do I see this in terms of, uh, when do you see it in real life? Well, lots of diseases sort of move in that in that way. They tend to, one person gets it, or two, person, two people get it, and then they spread. We'll actually do a question like that about a zombie outbreak here in just a second. So how can I tell if it's exponential just by looking at the numbers? If I have a little subset, can I really tell? And the the answer is pretty much yes. So if I have this sort of setup, what I want to happen, have happen, and I'm actually going to flip over to the bigger one. I'll get to those in a second. What I want to have happen is uh, a different, a change that's in a certain uh, scenario. What I want to happen up here, or what I want to see, is how much they change individually by the x. And what I'm looking for is what's called a common difference. Common difference means it changes uh, essentially by the same every time. And if they don't, I need to make some adjustment for that. So uh, assuming it goes up every time, in this case it's going up by 1. So yeah, it has a common difference. On the bottom, I'm looking to see uh, if the relationship multiplies out. But the only real way I can figure that out is by doing division. So if I'm doing this one, I'm going to do 2 divided by 1, which is of course 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Uh, 1 divided by 1 half. I really shouldn't write that as a fraction. 1 divided by 1 half is 2. And 1 fourth divided by 1 half is 2 as well. So, uh, sorry, 1 half divided by 1 fourth. I don't know what I was thinking. 1 half divided by 1 fourth gives me 2 as well. So I have a common ratio, which is what this is called. If you remember back to pre-algebra, ratio is a fraction, so if you have the same uh, final answer as a fraction, which is in this case 2 over 1, if you have a common ratio on the bottom and a common difference on top, then it's going to be an exponential because it means for each time that it goes up here, you're going to have that shoot up, which is exactly uh, sort of what you want to have happen, but it's going to shoot up in such a way that it's going to multiply on top of itself by the same amount every time. Let's look at a couple samples, the little ones I had up earlier. So in this case, I need to see if the one part of it is increasing by the same amount. And by the way, in a graphical situation, you may get different ones, sort of like it may go 1, 3, 5. You can fill in the blanks for the middle if you have to, to see if it's going up by that amount every time. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in this form. I just wrote them this way this time. Anyway, uh, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So there is a common difference. That's good. Uh, now I need to see what the difference is here, and I tend to do those backwards. Uh, so I need to do 5 
or I mean not the difference, the ratio. 5 divided by 3 is of course 5 thirds, which is like 1 and 2 thirds. Then I do 3 divided by 1. That's not looking good. 3 divided by 1 is 3, and 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So as you can see, it's not exponential because the relationships don't do that. In fact, I would say uh, since it goes up by the same amount every time, this is probably a linear relationship. Just FYI. So the answer to this one, is it exponential? No, it's not. Uh, what about the other one? Below, maybe it does something interesting. We're going to look on the top, of course, to see if there's some sort of common difference. And once again, it's going up by 1 every time, so that's a good thing. For here, I'm going to look for that common ratio in my output values. 4, this one's 4, and 8 divided by 2 is of course 4 as well. So I have a common ratio, I have a common difference, so my input values or my x values need to have, be going up by the same amount every time, so common difference, yeah. My y values need to be uh, going up uh, by a multiplier, so really you do 2 times 4 to get 8, and 8 times 4 gives you 32, so they have a common ratio, so I can say yes it's an exponential function. So if you get asked that type of question, there it is. From here, we're going to look at the idea of the whole uh, zombie outbreak thing. Now as I said before, the exponential uh, setup is y equals a times uh, b to the x power. Now the x of course would be the number of uh, times or whatever it happens to be, your input. Your B would be your change, or how much it changed by. And then uh, your A value would be your initial amount. So in this state, in this setup, we have two people that start out with it. So we're doing a little zombie apocalypse scenario, or at least zombie outbreak. So it starts with two people, what doesn't? And then it spreads very quickly. Every single day, uh, this thing is tripling. So the tomorrow, six more people will get it. So I need to get some idea of how many people have this uh, zombie sort of virus in six weeks. Now, in order to do that, I've set, I need to do a little bit of conversion. I set this up in days, and I want to know something about weeks, so I need to see how many days are in six weeks. So if you have six weeks, and I know there are uh, in one week, there are seven days. I want to know in 42 days. And that would be my x value. That's my input up here. Now I have to think, well, OK, what about the rest of it? Well, y is my final amount. That's what I'm looking for. A would be my initial amount. I'm starting with two people. And the change component is that it triples every day. So that would mean times 3. And the number of days it's going to happen is 42 days. As you can see, this thing is not going to be easily contained. So. I'm going to do the 3 to the 42nd power first, because remember, exponents beat to multiply. And I get some gigantic number that I'm going to eventually convert to um, scientific notation. And then I want to multiply that times 2. And I get a final answer of 2.2. Uh, 1, 9, or 2.2, .2 or whatever your um, scientifically appropriate number would be here. Significant figure, sorry. So 2.19 times 10 to the 20th. That would be um, 2.19 and 18 zeros. So. that many people will get it if we don't stop it. So that's a lot of zombies. I mean, good luck avoiding that. Um, it's well over the amount of people on Earth. So apparently, this thing is going to aliens and all kinds of other things as well. So hopefully, 
doesn't happen but we'll see you know who knows and in the final section I want to talk about graphing one very quickly and this graph is just set up in terms of okay let's do a you know, sort of a quick hand graph based off of uh, plugging in points and trying stuff generally I mean the whole point of a graph is you can have an input and it's got a matching output and then you just get your answers and plot those points and that whole thing so in the first one it starts at negative two and I'm for some reason decided to use the same thing I don't know so I get uh, two times three to the negative two. Uh, three to the negative two would be one ninth. And then you end up uh, doing that times two and you get two ninths. In the next one I'll do two times three to the negative one and it'll end up being two thirds. In this one, I do 2 times 3 to the 0. And remember, anything raised to the 0 power is just 1, so it's really 2 times 1, which is 2. And then I end up doing 2 times 3 to the first power, because I'm just plugging in this x for this. 3 to the first power is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. And in the final one, I do 2 times 3 to the second power. 3 to the second power is, of course, 9. I don't know what I was thinking. This is... 3 to the first, which is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. I'm losing it. I was thinking ahead, sorry. So if you were like, what? This guy's insane. I figured it out. I mean, I may still be insane, but whatever. Uh, so these are my x, these are my y values that came out, so I guess I should call this one y. I'll make a new column over here for x, y. The x input was negative 2, and then I get 2 ninths. When I plugged in negative 1, I ended up with 2 thirds. When I plugged in a 0, I got 2. When I plugged in a one, I ended up with a six, and I plugged in a two, ended up with eighteen. You should notice, by the way, at the zero, um, when you plug it in, really that means what happens on the y-axis. So it's telling you right here, without any of this other stuff, at the zero, whatever number is in front is your starting point in terms of it's the point on the x-axis or y-axis where you're going to start your graph. So let's do a little graph work here. I'm going to go up to around two and make a dot. I'm going to uh, at negative one. And since I use this, I think this is supposed to be the point where 5 exists. So it's very close uh, to this sort of thing. Here's negative 2, probably somewhere in here. So it's probably like right in there. And then the next one probably goes somewhere right in there. Like I said, it increases very quickly. So this one's actually probably a little bit high. something like this and now visually you can see why so many zombies existed after 42 days basically it wipes out the entire population of the earth but you know there it is exponential relationships or exponential functions not really that complicated just set them up make sure your input looks correct and then uh, if you need to determine from a set of numbers whether it is look for a common difference in the x values a, and then a common ratio in your uh, y values or your outputs and it's exponential if both of those things exist